Hello, what is up YouTube and welcome back to another game and episode of Factory Town. New series, I'm starting along with the other ones that I'm playing now. The other ones will not be affected by this, but I do actually really enjoy this game and I thought I had it, if I'm honest. That's how much I like it. Yeah. Uh, going through my Steam. Now, I, I'm not, I've just put everything on default. It's custom came on de default. So as you can see, it's a bit of a crappy land there. Lots of bridges needed, lots of rough terrain to move forward to. But basically, this game is about resource management and production. Its graphics are what you see. They are not fancy 3D farms with animals in. You won't see them, but they will produce the goods. Throughout researching, which you need to do by collecting researchable goods, i.e. papers, books, and the like, you will then upgrade. We start with four people, a town hall for storage, and a little bit of road. Nothing is free. It costs you to plant all the roads. Uh, it, it costs money to plant the dirt road and any better roads than that you will have to actually make the resources for, i.e. cobbles for cobble road. All of the resources are as they are on the map, but none of them are infinite. All of them will decay over time. Anything that is grown can grow back, as long as you don't decimate it, of course. But the idea for going later on is that you have farms and the various different buildings that you need to keep these things going. The basic infrastructure of this game is simple. So you can see we can place a house. Houses cost nothing. The only thing you have in terms of houses is how many you can put down. So top left hand corner you can see there are some numbers. The first one in the top le left is the town hall obviously. So one of one we're allowed one of those for now. And we've got one. The next one is houses four or four. And we're allowed four and we've got four. And the next one is your workers. Now this is visibly that you can see, but also any workers inside buildings will count as well to that number. We're allowed 12, we've got eight. The happiness is the next step, and that is how happy your people are, and we'll get to that shortly. And then you've got the coins, gold, red, blue, and purple. So the idea of the game is to provide the resources to your inhabitants that live in these houses. Of course, you will gain more as you go along and upgrade and the coins come in the research level so obviously the gold coins come from the foods that you provide them the red coins from general resources the blue coins from advanced resources and finally the purple coins from the end game resources you then use these coins to purchase various different things from gods to research of course the most prominent one being research just doing some basic setups here so you can see I have now selected the units to collect various different things. There is tree and then ask them, you need to tell them where to drop it off. So they're going to drop off the wood at that lumber mill. The lumber mill then has a couple of recipes, planks and paper. For now I just want them to make planks. All of the buildings need to be connected by roads in order to work correctly. And roads will increase the movement speed of all of your units whether it be the people that you can see now the little the people that are running around or eventually you will get carts and then wagons and trains and various different things like that so we've got some collecting wood we've got some collecting stone and we've got some more collecting wood now the wood on the left is going directly into our town center so that is what we've got as our backup and you can see that again in the top left under the resources under the coins the very top left item is indeed wood the guys on the right that are collecting wood are collecting that for the lumber mill, which are turning it directly into planks. So the idea is we're going to have a stockpile of wood in the main town centre. And we're also going to have some planks being made by the lumber mill. And of course, with all resources, they need to be moved. So we're now going to ask somebody to go to the lumber mill and pick up the planks and take those to the town centre. So now in the town centre we will have stored both logs and planks being made from different places but all being brought to the same place which is the centre of town. Now in order to get these goods to your civilization, both food and goods like wood and various different cloths and clothes, you need to first have the representative building. So for food of course it is a food store. And for the resources like woods and cloves and things like that, you need a general store. So with that in mind, we're going to go straight in for the food market. And the general store you can see there. The food market being the first one we'll put down requires 10 stone and 10 planks, which we of course by now have. 
the circle is how much of an area it will cover in terms of houses so wherever your houses are try and place it sort of central to that which is what I'm going to do here now yes placing it so far away at the start is a bit of a pain in the ass but in the future it will pay you off in dividends because it will make life easier now what you need to do is when you build your houses is make sure you keep them within that circle outside of that circle they will not be able to collect the resources from the food market any food we get from this point on you send to the food market that will automatically then go to the people in their houses any other food elsewhere will not get used at all throughout the game so it has to go to the food market for the civilization to actually take it to the house you will see that by the food that's coming in now you can see one piece yellow there of grain as soon as that goes in you will see a coin above one of the houses there it is and that process is rinse and repeat throughout the game of course you get more coins for better resources so if you turn the grain into bread you get four coins per instead of one water wells provide water now one water well is probably just enough for the four houses you will need a lot of water wells though they don't last forever they don't last very long and they, they produce enough water for a certain amount but they will very quickly run out so keep an eye on that keep an eye on the piping as well obviously putting that water well down there we can use in terms of getting an actual person to go to it collect a bucket of water and take it to where we need you can do that to the houses but i don't bother at the start i wait for liquid pipes because it's not that much further in basic uh, liquid pipes out of wood but you can do that if you wish just sending somebody up there to the top left you can see a patch of carrots so we're going to collect those as well so that's two foods coming in now realistically you want to get and actually before we go into that I've just seen this screen pop up so let's go over that because it gives a lot more clarity on what I've been explaining so this is an example and as you can see this is harvested from carrots so the resource itself produced by is where you can produce it and obviously farm is where we'll get to later on and town speciality will also come to later on but that is farming as well so it's sellable in the food market you gain one yellow coin per carrot you gain one experience per carrot and one happiness per carrot the consumption time takes 30 seconds in order for them to eat and process this good, i.e. the carrot, and the happiness lasts for 45 seconds. After both of them numbers are over, the timers are over, the carrot is no longer relevant and they would need another one. And that is how the game works. The better the food, the higher the, these numbers get and the higher the coins, experience and happiness get also. And this is the aim of the game, to keep everybody as happy as possible, level up the houses, increase your population size, and get to the final goal. And on the subject of final goals or end goals, there are two for the game. As you can see here, there are the two options where that star icon is. The first one, where it's 0 of 1, is to build an Omni Temple, which is basically just the last building of the game, the most complex building to build, and it require you to get through all of the research, or most of the research anyway, in order to build that. Alternatively, the one below that, where you can see I'm currently 2 out of 10, is to get to research level 10. You need to complete both of them at the same time in order to win the game. It's not one or the other. Hopefully I made that clear. Um, so once you've completed both of them things, you have beaten the game and that is what you can do. Now there are people that can do it. I think the fastest I've seen is a couple of hours or something. Realistically though, for me and for many, many others that play the game, you're talking a lot more hours than that. Probably 10 to 12 hours for the completion of the game depending on how you like to play i'm not a speed runner by trade i just like to enjoy the game so that's what we do when we're not doing it as fast as possible but that is it while we're here you can see there are the other two quests as well the first one being the research so to get to level three we need to research 10 wooden wheels and 20 stone polished stone blocks and to increase our population which is this one here we need to get six more happiness. Okay, so with that hopefully out of the way, that means that you should, the UI that you can see, you should understand a bit better now. Any questions or comments, of course, just let me know. I am not an expert, but I have played this, I've put a few hours in this game, and I can quite happily do a quick startup tutorial if anyone should need it. It is great fun, I love this game. 
So, what we're looking for now is the next building required, as I mentioned earlier, and that is the general store. So this allows us to sell goods to everybody in that radius, the same as the food market. If you click on it, you can see there what goods can be sold here, and that's the basic one. So basic goods like wooden planks, tools, cloth and clothes, and anything that's sort of starter tier items that your people will need. I'm also going to throw in just a quick bit of road there if I can afford to. Yes, because as I said, the road definitely makes the people move faster and they will automatically use the road if it does make them quicker. It obviously does the um, AI itself. So you can see that person now has gone up to collect some cotton. As soon as they've collected that, they should run to the road and then down the road because obviously, as you can see, they are hopping much faster. Yes, they all hop. They have no legs. They have to hop. Now, with that set complete, we have now unlocked four more houses, so I'll get those straight in. And trees are in the way, though, there, so I'm going to knock them down if it'll let me. No, I can't afford it. Never mind. We'll hold on to it for now. Hovering over the house, you can see, has two happiness. The houses will level up over time and look a lot schnazzier, but that will take quite a bit of time, actually. So, for now, it's very monotonous, very manual, very similar to like a Minecraft game where you start off doing everything manually and then at the end of the game everything's automatic. The whole point here is to make things automatic, using your people to collect the resources up to the point where you can use other things like mining things and mines to do it for you. And coming back now, I am going to get a, a just as a note you saw, hopefully saw the red coins coming in there above the houses. That stuff being sold at the general store. Exactly the same premise as the food, but just from the general store. And at the top you can see we've got 15 gold coins and 17 current red coins. Now, building the school, you need that to do the research. And research is a combination of two things mostly. The first thing being the requirement of actual research in the case of, as I said, paper is the first one, which are worth one each. And then books, which are worth, I think, four each. And you get upgraded variants of research from there, along with coins, which are the coins you can see we are building up. If you're researching something that's around the food industry, you'll need the gold coins. If it's goods or resources, you'll need the red coins. And obviously the blue coins for the higher end stuff and the purple for the end game stuff. You may even need a combination of all of them, but that's much later on, so don't panic. But the general premise is you need coins and research or papers. So we can get papers made by getting somebody to collect, and they are doing that. Collect some water from the fountain because obviously it's manual at the minute, so they're going to run to the lumber mill. Combine the water with wood, make paper. The paper then goes into the school, and when we get to, I believe it's 10 paper, is our first research, you then get to unlock your first item. It's 10 paper and, sorry, 10 research and a small amount of gold. Just like that going into the research you can see there are 10 and 20 gold and we've now researched grain processing so building the food mill there we go we will then turn grain into flour now giving flour to your people is more beneficial than the grain because as i said the grain gives one coin the flour gives four and then obviously you could turn flour into bread which is worth even more coins and the bread into sandwiches and so on and so forth and that is the premise so we'll get instead of them giving the raw grain to our food shop we're going to ask the workers to instead take the grain to the food mill then the food mill will create flour and we'll get somebody to take the flour from there to the food shop instant upgrade so you can see the population quest icon over there is lit up that means that we are over the limit and can indeed level up so clicking that takes us to level four and we now need up to 60 and unlocks four more houses so we can now put in 12. I'm going to put some roads around because they are needed anything especially later on wagons and carriages without roads will not work. They also can't share the road they will not go through each other so you will need at least two ways to get somewhere all the time otherwise they'll just get stuck stop and you'll have to figure that out and fix them. Hopefully, sooner than you realise that the resources have vanished. 
So in the meantime, we now have 12 houses. You can see slowly over each of the houses, there's something popping up. Gold coins mostly is the food being sold. I saw a four just then as I said it, which means we've selling it yet and there a lot. So we're selling flour. And the red is for the general goods. And the book icons are for research being delivered to the school. Now I have chucked in, as you can see, right next door to the food mill, a market just to get some coins in our pocket to allow me to do things like basically knock trees down and dig up resources that are in my way because that costs gold and I need it so instead of them having to walk all the way across the town to deliver the food it's a lot quicker to do it that way and that's why the four golds are coming in a lot faster than any of the red coins with research complete on woodworking it also means now we can build a few better things shoots being the most important one that i'm after so we'll research that too with shoots they are as they say on the tin they are shoots that you can roll things down they have to be rollable if it doesn't roll then you will not be able to put them on the shoot so are carrots rollable i mean they are but they're technically a bit wonky as well so a bad example but stones do roll. So doing the same thing again, selecting from the resource to the end of the part, you'll see they'll then put them on there. The goods will then roll along and into the storage. This way, they're not having to do any walking. They just have to do the very small, well, they're walking two or three blocks instead of 20 to 30 blocks there and back. Massively increasing production rates. We could put one all the way out here as well to the cotton. I'm not gonna question that cotton rolls down the chute, um, but it does. There we go, you can see the cotton going down the chute. And again, exactly the same premise, it will go into that building as it was doing before, but now the actual people don't have to walk. You can share the chutes and the belts or any form of transport that you use. Just remember though that wherever they're going to has to accept the goods, otherwise you'll get a blocked pipe. So we've got a couple of people there chucking stone on there, a couple of people, or three actually, chucking on wood. They're going all into our main town centre to be stored. The is a separate group over here collecting the wood, but what I'm going to do, instead of having to walk, as we've already proven, walking is slow, I am going to give them a bit of shoot so that they could just basically stand, turn, drop, and mine, turn, drop. They don't have to walk at all. So exactly the same as before, but just making them drop it off at the chute instead. Now they will automatically, to a point, uh, look for more resources when the resources run out. Of course, they will run out over time, so they will go to the nearest trees. But depending on the gap, and I don't know the limitations, but depending on the gap, they can just stop dead. There are plenty of icons that come up above their heads to tell you what they are or aren't doing. Generally, if there is an icon above one of your people's heads, there's a problem. If there's no issues at all, they shouldn't have any icons. So with a bit more research complete, basic logistics gives us the ability to make a wooden belt and some logistical pipes. Now the belts are a game changer as well because they can go uphill. Remember a chute works on gravity. It can't go uphill. Things don't roll uphill usually on their own um, unless you're on a different planet so for this game it is the same they have to roll either on a flat surface they will roll indefinitely or downhill but they will not go uphill now belts will allow things to go uphill slowly but they will go uphill and of course we upgrade the belts throughout the game what I'm going to do now is separate these two lines so that first line is going to be wood going into our main town storage and I want the, the stone the rock to go into the stone masons that I've just put down there and that will polish that stone up to give us the next tier of stone also that unlocks or should unlock the next floor which is a faster option but yeah there we go stone bricks now being made we obviously need somebody to take them out remember to take out the resources you are making when you are making them Otherwise, it will just fill up 
which is in most cases 10 maximum and stop dead so you want to make sure that you take all of the resources out even if you're using the people to do it manually until you have an automated option with a chute or a belt or wagon or train so there you can see I have asked all of those people to get all of those polished stones and take them to the general store to be sold to the public. They will do that and as soon as they arrive you should see a flicker of red coins again. There they go. And that was those stole, sorry, bricks being immediately sold. The back up there is clear with the carrots. Basically, we're given so many carrots to the market everybody in the town has bought carrots and they're within that time limit that I showed you earlier of consumption and until that time limit runs out they won't buy any more carrots more houses so we're up to 16 now and remember putting down houses every time you put down a house the resources that you are creating will be used up faster so if you've got a production line in place that is overkill it's not too much to worry about if you've got a production line that is struggling it's going to struggle more so adding the houses only do if you're confident you can handle it though if you don't provide them with the resources you don't lose anything so there's no way of like people moving out or anything you don't lose population like in most games people won't die uh, but your production will obviously slow to a halt and then your coins won't come in as quick and it's all about keeping your people happy which increases your experience which increases your levels but also gaining the coins so that you can buy the next thing in the research table, i.e. that, a wooden conveyor belt. A lot of things you research you will need to make. You can't just place them when you've researched them. The wooden belt is a perfect example. So to make a wooden belt, you need wooden planks, two wooden planks, and two wooden logs. The same as you make a wheel, you need four wooden logs. So in order to do that, you then have to send these resources to a woodworking place that is set to make them and upon them receiving the right amount of resources they will produce these goods then goods can then be used obviously the belts as soon as you've got them send them to your storage any of your storages will do but they will not count if they're in the internal storage of the workshop so get them out of the workshop into your town center is the most logical option as soon as they appear in there you will then be able to place those wooden belts and use them as you wish and a perfect example of that is this lumber mill is making planks and our workshop needs planks we was having people do it by hand but we now have proper belts so all i'm going to do is gently persuade this chute to go over there so that the wood logs go in there i'll then turn the belt like so i made a mess there actually get rid of that and replace it there we go so now when we go on the grabber which is the item that takes the goods out of the building you can select what you want it to grab and we want it to grab planks green tick that will now grab those they will follow that and go into the workshop the workshop now has an automated bunch of resources going in to do exactly what we want now that automation that I've just set up is literally to make the belts so what will happen now is over time we'll just gain more and more belts consecutively because we've already got the wood coming in the wood is then being split into wood and planks the planks and wood get mixed together and make the belts and so on and so forth so that is the premise of that automation now a lot of the people that were doing these things manually we can delete it doesn't hurt to leave them though they don't cost anything other than population space and as you can see 43 out of 64 we've got a lot of a lot of spare people to use but we don't currently need them quite yet but we are definitely at time now so i am going to end the episode here if you like this episode and video and also game please click like to let me know i do have a lot more in play however i'm not planning on it taking over the oxygen not included series so likely that will take precedent thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always join us next time take care goodbye